The teardown of Huawei's sleek and highly cost-effective Mate 70 Air is here. Is it the strictest father of the iPhone Air or just a fake Air weighing over 200 grams? Wow, Huawei, did you just put a phone on top of VC liquid cooling? The latest Huawei Mate 70 Air was purchased for $46.99 for a teardown, and its 256GB model is sold out. The online reviews for this phone are quite polarized. Sometimes with its 2.8G weight and 7-inch size, it seems to be riding on the iPhone Air's popularity. Other times, it's considered the most cost-effective phone from Huawei in recent years, like the strictest father of the iPhone Air. So what are the facts? We need to run some tests. First, let's quickly check the thickness. Huawei's side is 6.6mm, 1mm thicker than the iPhone Air. The actual look of both sides is like this. Then, about the frame material, the Mate 70 Air uses a polymer and metal composite. Ah, it indeed appears quite appealing, but upon touching it, it lacks that refreshing metallic sensation. When comparing the thickness with the 70L and the 70 Pro, the difference becomes significantly noticeable. Additionally, the 70 Air is somewhat broader than the 70 Pro, giving it the appearance of a more flattened version of the 70 Pro. In terms of body weight, Huawei with the original film weighs 210 grams, while the iPhone Air is 165 grams, a difference of a full 45 grams. Many people say that with such weight, it can still be called Air. But in reality, the first moment I held these two phones, I didn't feel any difference in weight. The feel of the Huawei is that it's both large and thin, with a larger surface area, so the pressure isn't as intense. You'll understand once you try it yourself. It's a completely different approach compared to the iPhone Air. I compared the screen visuals as well. First, the chin is definitely not comparable to the iPhone. One is a $4,000 phone, the other is $8,000, so it's normal for the bezel control to be a cost factor. Now, let's take a look at the screen brightness. Well, it's quite evident that Huawei's brightness is superior in this context. I examined Huawei's official website, and it states that the peak brightness reaches an impressive 4,000 nits, observing the widely discussed dimness comparison this year. It's also quite apparent that Huawei's screen is darker. Wow, this display is indeed remarkable. There's something to it, and this Apple 18 9 is quite wide. With the ultra-thin body, I feel it's incredibly comfortable to type with both hands. Those who like using 26 keys should definitely try it themselves. It's really fascinating. As for the internal materials of the 70 Air, let's discuss as we take it apart. How do you open the back cover after heating it? After taking it apart, I was quite startled. You can see that the side fingerprint design is very easy to damage during disassembly. Please be careful when disassembling it yourself. The entire back cover is made of a tight fiber material, but it feels noticeably softer than the necklines of other Mate 70 series we've disassembled before, probably to make it thinner. The small pillars on the lens cover act as antennas to boost signal strength by receiving signals from the motherboard. The whole circle of the lens deco at the back serves as a signal antenna. This year, the iPhone 17 Pro uses this design too. In the middle of the back cover, there's something quite special. Besides having a lot of cushioning foam, there's actually a metal plate in the center. I guess this design is for heat dissipation and to protect the battery, considering the material is relatively soft. Now, let's proceed to remove the motherboard cover. During disassembly, I saw the side fingerprint sensor is linked to the motherboard cover, and both the red-sealed camera and ultra-wide-angle camera connect directly to the motherboard. Turning over to the back of the motherboard cover, you can see there's a small subboard hidden inside. I must say, Huawei's level of component customization is very high. The flash uses a monochrome design, which is a bit of a pity. Compared to dual-color temperature flashes, it may not render skin tones as warmly when taking photos of people. However, it is possible that the red spectrum camera compensates for it. The lower half of the mainboard cover has a graphene heat dissipation sticker. The Mate 70 Air does not have wireless charging, but I completely understand that in order to accommodate a large battery with this thickness, wireless charging was omitted. So this is the internal structure of the Mate 70 Air. On a scale of 1 to 91, what score would you give it? Now, as we remove these cameras, we can see that although it's called Air, the imaging configuration hasn't been downgraded. First, there is a red spectrum camera with over 1.5 million spectral channels responsible for color. Then there's an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with macro capabilities, a 12 megapixel RYYB 3X telephoto lens, and a 1 1.3 inch large main sensor. The variable aperture from the 70 Pro has been removed, but this is to reduce thickness and is not a major issue. In contrast, the back of the iPhone Air features a fusion camera. After comparing the photo effects in long distance shots, the difference is like one being on the 91st floor and the other on the 69th. You can see that the details on the Huawei side are still clearly visible. On the iPhone Air side, the optimization effect is already applied. Now let's remove the top speaker and you can see that the top speaker extends to this position. I tried to pry it up with some force, but it wouldn't budge at all. So it's very likely that the top speaker is secured with structural adhesive underneath. Let's try heating it up. Ah, it took a lot of effort to get it done. Indeed, there is a thick layer of structural adhesive underneath and the top speaker of the 70L looks really impressive. Let me show you a comparison. This is the bottom speaker of the Pure 70 Pro. 
Ah, now you can see it, right? Flipping it over, this top part is its sound unit, which I measured to be approximately 12 16 in size, and the irregular shape below is used to fill acoustic material. Next, I removed the motherboard, which is a single layer design, beneficial for heat dissipation, thumbs up. Then, underneath the motherboard, you can see that the cutout area of the VC heat dissipation plate is very large, and the thermal paste is applied generously like it costs nothing. Then the motherboard shield is removed. The thermal paste inside this shielding cover is also packed full. After scraping off this thermal paste, you can see the silver component, which is its RAM. Looking further down, the green part is the 9220B chip this time. The 70 Air allows you to choose the chip, and now in the Kirin 9020 universe, there's the original 9020, the new packaged version on the 9020X, and also the 9020A and 9020B. And there's also a hidden 9010S revised model, making it five models in total for the CPU. The 9020A and B have reduced frequency modifications compared to the original version. As for the GPU, the 9020A has three CUs of Mali 920, while the 9020B has two CUs. In short, compared to the original version, the 9020B has its CPU and GPU both cut down. For everyday usage, it is certainly sufficient, and with the Red Magic 5 system, it operates smoothly. Additionally, in terms of communication, the Mate 70 Air provides advanced holography, four-screen Beidou, bi-directional satellite communication, and a Wi-Fi 7 chip. From a communication perspective, the Mate 70 Air's value at 4000 is quite high. I can continue disassembling and start with the tail plug part. First, a very important point is that the Mate 70 Air supports dual 10T SIM cards. It's not the rumored eSIM, which is great because it's a physical SIM card. We're saved and don't need to visit the mobile service center for this. The bottom speaker is removed. After opening the graphene cooling, I found the supplier matches the top part. I measured the sound unit and it's symmetrical with the top speaker, both 12 by 16 mm. Moreover, the Mate 70 Air is the first phone certified by Audio Vivi, so its sound quality can compare to the iPhone Air. This is iPhone Air. This is Huawei Mate 70 Air. After comparing, I just want to say, who still says that dual speakers aren't essential? The transfer rate of this small board I unplugged is USB 2.0. Ah, there is definitely room to enhance the transfer speed. The Mate 70 standard version is already equipped with USB 3.0. The wired charging speed is 66 watts. Let's proceed to remove the battery now. Wow, dude, your cooling system is really over the top. Let's peel off the ribbon cable and take another look. Wow, Huawei, did you actually place a smartphone on top of a vapor chamber hard cooling system? My goodness, at first glance, this battery appears to be a standard single cell with a singular interface design, but it's truly not that straightforward. Internally, the battery features a dual cell layered configuration, indicating it's composed of two ultra thin cells with a layer of thermal grease sandwiched in between. And all of this is merely 4.2 millimeters in thickness. It is comfortably half as thin as a regular battery. Then the capacity of this battery is an impressive 6,500 mAh, more than twice that of the iPhone Air. This is Huawei's largest phone battery, the Kirin chip with Harmony OS and this 6500 mAh battery. Can anyone in the comments guess what this equals in Android MR? The battery is made by Dongguan New Energy Technology Code LTD. It's a pity the motor was removed. The Mate 70 Air didn't use Huawei's usual 9595 motor, but chose a Z-axis small motor like in the Huawei Mate X6 and small tablets. Maybe Huawei aimed to make it like a small tablet. So this is the internal family of the Huawei Mate 70 Air. When you take it apart, it's indeed one of the most cost-effective phones Huawei has released recently. It has strong speakers, a big screen, and decent photography capabilities. Even though it's a trimmed down version, it still features a flagship chip, and the price for this setup is just over 4,000. Who could have imagined that before? I think within Huawei, only a second-hand Huawei can match its value. I checked the Huawei Mate 70 Pro, and a second-hand one is now just 3,078 Wen, which is 400 Wen less than the Mate 70 Air. Besides the battery, features like imaging, performance, and the frame are all better than the Air. Plus, every phone has passed multiple official quality checks, ensuring quality. Okay, restoration complete. To me, calling it the Mate 70 Air isn't quite right. I think it should be the Mate 70X. Does anyone in the comments know why? 